Hey, go fans, I'm Thomas Mock. Welcome to Fiddle Beagles Now. It is time for our free agency grades. Yes, we're going to go through every single internal free agent candidate. The Eagles went ahead and re-signed the past couple of days, and a couple of the ones they went outside of the organization to go ahead and sign, including the newest addition, that is wide receiver Zach Pas Pascal, who was signed just yesterday. We'll give you his grade and details on that coming up in just one second. So we're going to dive through all of it, talk about the money, talk about the additions, everything else going on in terms of equal free agency. Now, they can still sign more people, but right now, as of Tuesday, March 22nd, these are the ones they've re-signed, so the guys we're going to go ahead and talk about. Um, we'll start with this, though. Who's been your favorite signing so far? Do you have a favorite Eagle signing? I know who mine is. Obviously, you'll see that coming up in just a couple of minutes, but give me your favorite Eagle signing down below in the comments section. All right, let's start with the internal guys, start with the cheap ones, and begin with Boston Scott, the running back who re-signed on a one-year, $1.8 million deal. You know, you think about Boston Scott, and you go, well, he's not that important, right? Like, you obviously have Kenny Gainwell, and you go ahead, and you have Miles Sanders. Then you look at what Boston Scott did in 2021. Right, now, There were injuries at the running back spot, and so he filled in more towards the middle part of the season, but still had 87 carries, 373 yards, okay, you know, 4.3 yards per carry, okay, seven rushing touchdowns. The guy had seven rushing touchdowns. He just has a knack for finding the end zone, and so, of course, Philadelphia technically could have gone to the free agent market. Melvin Gordon was out there. They could have technically drafted somebody. Maybe they still do, but I think they just love Boston Scott. They're comfortable with him in their locker room, comfortable with him on the roster, and want to go ahead and bring him back on a very cheap $1.8 million deal. Now, he does, again, fall into the running back three spot, and so you have Kenny Gainwell in front of him, Miles Sanders obviously there is the number one. I think this means Philadelphia does not draft anybody. I'd be shocked if they do. I don't think they bring back Jordan Howard either. I think three running backs and then, you know, bring in a practice squad guy or two as well as what Philadelphia is going to end up doing. Um, great for all this, very simple. I think we'll go ahead and give it a B-. minus. Don't hate it. Again, I just mentioned, Boston Scott has an act for the end zone. I kind of like the idea of drafting like a Brees Hall out of Iowa State, maybe find the next great running back. You know, in the later rounds, you got enough draft picks. You got a luxury of them, round three, round four, round five. Maybe they still do that but I think that this solidifies Philadelphia's running back depth chart. And again, I like Boston Scott. appreciate what he's done. Just don't know if I'm like super pumped about it, hence why it's not an A+. Um, go ahead down below, answer this question. Grade the Boston Scott signing, A, B, C, D, or F. I gave it a B-. minus. Give me your grade on the Boston Scott signing right now. All right, another internal candidate here we'll jump into. Number two is Anthony Harris. The safety re-signed out a one-year $2.5 million deal. This, to me, very much feels like Philadelphia wants to upgrade the safety position. Unsure if they're going to be able to, right? Is Kyle Hamilton going to be available at 15 in the first round of the NFL draft? Do they go get Tyron Matthew in a couple of days here? Obviously, I haven't signed him as of filming this uh, uh, yet, but obviously they weren't totally firm on Kayvon Wallace being a starter and Marcus Epps being a starter, so they want to bring back uh, uh, Anthony Harris, who didn't have a bad year overall, but he's just not like a great starting safety. And so my grade for this has got to be a C plus. Like again, I don't hate it. I don't hate Anthony Harris. I think that he had his moments, but is he a top 10 safety in the NFC? Uh, is he a top 15 safety in the NFC? Uh, you know, you start to kind of wonder where you put him in terms of two safeties per team and then in the NFC with 16 teams. So not thrilled about it. You would have liked an upgrade there, but I think Philadelphia was gauging the market and for $2.5 million, definitely a lot cheaper than going to get a Marcus Williams. You saw how much he signed for with the Baltimore Ravens. All right, another internal uh, free agent they re-signed was Greg Ward to a one-year deal. They've not given us the money details on this one yet. I'm sure it's going to be very cheap, you know, one or two million dollars. This was an interesting one just because Greg Ward didn't do anything last year. Like, you go back to the Carson Wentz years, and he was a favorite target of Greg Ward and had some really good, uh, I'd say, games. You think back to that Washington game a couple of years ago to go ahead and, you know, get a big win and push them off to the playoffs where so they went and lost to the Seattle Seahawks. He had a couple of touchdowns on that one. Last year, seven catches. Like, they didn't even throw to him. Seven catches, less than 100 yards. Did have to have three touchdowns touchdowns, but just kind of a forgotten receiver. Interesting to see what they do with him in 2022, but I'm assuming they gave him, you know, very, a very cheap contract, and so you need depth at wide receiver, we'll give it a B plus and have no issues with it. Now, obviously, the Eagles are going to go ahead and draft somebody at wide receiver. I'm very confident in that, as we'll talk about, we talk about Zach Pascal in just a couple of minutes, but they needed depth, and Ward's a, a Savas veteran, and you kind of want to reward both him and Boston Scott. They're undrafted free agent guys who have earned their keep at their respective positions. Um, speaking of the wide receiver position, who is the number two wide receiver on the Eagles right now? Is there a number two wide receiver on the Eagles right now? Is it Quez Watkins? Is it, is it Pascal? Is it somebody else? Who's the number two receiver on the Eagles? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. And also, while you're down there, if you're a real Eagles fan, make sure you're subscribed. Like, we only want real Eagle fans here. There are a couple people that comment, you know, I'm a subscriber, but, you know, I don't really like the Eagles. And it's like, what are you doing? If you're a real Eagle fan, you'll subscribe. Go down below. Trying to get to 26 and a half subs. Uh, 26 and a half thousand subs, excuse me. You started at zero. Now we're at 26 and a half thousand. So go down below and hit that red button for more great videos like this. 
All right, final internal free agent that went ahead and re-signed was Fletcher Cox. I love this. I mean, literally a one-year, $14 million deal. This was a great overall move by Philadelphia. Not only did they get some cap relief by essentially cutting him and posting it June 1st in terms of the actual uh, saving in terms of money, because you're going to pay him like $18 million a year, they realized that Fletcher Cox is definitely, you know, in decline, getting a little bit, uh, a little bit older, and so they wanted to give him a cheaper, more team-friendly deal, and Cox obliged, and now he's back. Now, to say that he's older and declining is to, to not to say that he's terrible. He's still a value integral part of this defensive front. You put him uh, alongside the other D tackles in there, including Mil Milton Williams. Now, of course, pass rushers on the outside. This D line is going to be scary good. Had they lost Fletcher Cox, there would have been a hole there. But now you only have to pay him for one more year. And then if he really stinks in 2022, you can be off his contract and have a lot more free agent money to go ahead and sign other pass rushers in 2023. This is an A-plus in terms of the grade. You guys see that on your screen. Definitely an A-plus overall. I think they did an absolutely fantastic job with the Cox deal. I thought they were going to cut him and then not bring him back, but cutting him and bring him back for a cheaper contract. Fantastic. That's one of the best things they've done uh, so far this offseason. And one of the best things that you can do is to go ahead and get one of the two-pack polo deals that are happening right now that are 25% off. The sun is out. It was literally 75 degrees in Atlanta, where I live right now. Yesterday, the polos are popping out as well. Jetsports.com forward slash Eagles polo is the link that you need. It's down below in the description box, and you get the two polos, and they're 25% off. I mean, tell me, you look great in these polos during the offseason. Get your gear now. That way, it's cheaper, and then you don't have to pay more when the NFL season starts, right? Come on, chestnut checkers. Again, down below in the description box, Jetsports.com forward slash Eagles Polo, the link that you need. Go up and you, uh, to the, or I guess go down and put the link in, but you can go up and put it into Google either way. Pick them up right now. All right, so they have done a couple of external free agent signings. We'll start with uh, the one that happened yesterday. They haven't done a lot in terms of external guys, but they did bring in Zach Paschal to a one year in terms of money. We don't know. Unknown money. In terms of money, we have no money, right? No idea how much money they uh, gave to Paschal. It's probably not a lot, but a one year deal makes sense for a guy who worked with Nick Sirianni uh, when Sirianni was the wide receiver coach for the Colts. And so the connection was always there. We talked about it on the channel. We assumed they were going to go ahead and sign him. 44 catches in 2020, probably his best season as a you know NFL player. 629 yards, six touchdowns. I mean, the guy is a very established veteran, number two or number three target. I think he eventually becomes wide receiver three. I think that you draft rookie Traylon Burks, Drake London, Chris Olave becomes number two, and then you got Devontae Smith. This is a very good veteran receiver and a group of young guys that I think will be a a, a solid addition. Like, this is an A-. minus. And again, they probably didn't pay him that much money. They should have tried for other receivers, and they apparently did try for like Allen Robinson and Robert Woods. So there were better options out there. I think eventually they realized, again, we need some depth. Let's bring in a guy who has been an established number two and established number three at times in his career because you don't really know what Quest Watkins is going to be the rest of his career. We think Watkins is going to be really good, but Pascal has proven that to be consistent. Again, not going to be a thousand-yard receiver, but I think he's going to be a solid pickup for Philadelphia. Um, are there any free agents you wish the Eagles had gotten? Like, I mean, I'm sure there's some. Marcus Williams, you know, I think would have gotten out. Uh, and possibly Adam Robinson or Devontae Adams or somebody like that. Is there a wide receiver you wish the Eagles would have gotten? Let me know. Or a free agent, I should say, you wish the Eagles would have gotten. Let me know who that is down below right now. All right, so as we go ahead and wrap up today's video, I want to get to the final internal candidate, or sorry, external candidate the Eagles went ahead and signed during free agency. Only two, right? They got Pascal so far, and then they went ahead and did the deal, we did the first day of free agency, in Hassan Reddick. This is the best move of free agency for Philadelphia. Three-year, $45 million deal. He has the third most sacks of any NFC pass rusher of the past three seasons, yet he's paid as the 17th highest paid NFC pass rusher in the NFL. So you're getting him at a discount, and he has been unbelievable so far throughout his career, whether he's been obviously with the Cardinals, whenever he was drafted at a Temple, and then a great season with Carolina, very much overlooked because Carolina stunk last year, but he was fantastic. The fact the Eagles went ahead and got him has greatly improved this defensive line and makes it back to being scary, and you need it to be scary. Even though the NFC is not full of great quarterbacks, it is full of good offensive lines, and if you can get some pressure on these quarterbacks, these bad young quarterbacks, look around the NFC East, whether it's Carson Wentz or Dak Prescott or Daniel Jones, I guess. I mean, this is a great one, two, three punch now at pass rusher with Reddick and Graham and Josh Sweat, and hopefully they add somebody else in, 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 in the draft as well. Four elite, or at least up-and-coming elite pass rushers on an Eagle football team, plus the interior pressure. Really, really impressive right now with Philadelphia. I know that you can talk about him being you know, a linebacker or an outside linebacker, but he's going to be a pass rusher, right? Just put him at defensive end. It's a 4-3. You're not going to play him an outside linebacker in a true sense. So either way, he's going to be fantastic rushing the passer and a fantastic pickup for Philadelphia. A+. Plus. I mean, him and the Fletcher Cox moves on the defensive line, one of the weaker parts of this Eagle team last year, really bolstered it. And I think overall put a nice bow on Philadelphia's free agency class. I think overall the Eagles didn't do as much as we thought that they would, 
But you got to realize they do need money to sign those three first round draft picks. And so they're saving money for that. And I think they looked around the free agency market and said, there are a lot of old, injured, expensive players that we don't want to be tied to long contracts with. Philadelphia has been there, done that in the past. They want to build through the draft. They're going to do that. And so picking and choosing their draft picks here with, or their, their, their signings here with Pascal and Hassan Reddick, I think was a fantastic combination. B plus overall for the Eagles free agency. I think, again, maybe a veteran receiver not named Pascal a little better would have been a nice pickup there. But I think, again, overall, the expectation is with three first-round draft picks, you are going to be able to get a linebacker and get another cornerback and maybe get a wide receiver or get a pass rusher. Like, they're going to do a lot in free or, uh, in the draft. And so, for instance, he dialed back a little bit. But overall, a great job. I will give it a B+. Um, what grade would you give the 2022 free agency class? Let me know down below, A, B, C, D, or F. Again, I think most of you will say A or B, but I want your free agent grade uh, for the entire class down below right now. Our ultimate for today on our Eagles News and River video. Plenty more content coming up later on this week. Stay tuned. Maybe they sign somebody else. Maybe by the time you watch this, they've signed somebody else. You're saying, where's the Tyron Matthews signing? I, listen, we'll get to that whenever they actually do make the deal. Make sure you guys are subscribed down below. For Philadelphia Eagles now, Thomas Mott signing off. Do the rest of your day.